hello good afternoon to all of you in the previous class we developed an expression for the logarithmic mean uh, temperature difference for parallel flow counter flow heat exchangers then we started with the discussion on effectiveness of the heat exchanger we derived the uh, the effectiveness equation for parallel flow uh, as well as uh, uh, counter flow heat exchangers and uh, you know uh, the effectiveness of a heat exchanger increases rapidly with the uh, when the value of ntv is 1.5 and if it crosses uh, 1.5 and when when the uh, the number of transfer units ntv value becomes very close to 3 then the increase in the effectiveness it keeps on reduces and depending upon the capacity ratio the uh, the if c is equal to 0 then the con the heat exchanger may be either condenser or uh, a boiler then you have seen the when depending upon the capacity ratio the expression for the effectiveness equation when c equal to 0 you have seen the equation uh, that is it is 1 minus exponential minus ntu or that is the and you have seen in the previous class then uh, you have also seen the which one is having the uh, the the which heat exchanger is having the better effectiveness with the help of a graph you have seen in the previous class uh, <coughs> Uh, that uh, the cross flow as well as the counter flow heat exchanger uh, is more effectiveness though the uh, value of ntv is higher than 3 and parallel flow heat exchanger is up to 1.5 it is effective then thereafter it effectiveness remains constant that you have seen in the previous class and we have also seen the uh, 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 charts for uh, different uh, configurations like parallel flow heat exchanger counter flow heat exchanger cross flow heat exchanger cell and tube heat exchanger with uh, number of tube passes how to evaluate the based on the capacity ratio that is the c minimum by that is like uh, c minimum by c max value and the uh, number of trans ntu value uh, it is also possible to evaluate from the the graphs which are given in the heat and mass transfer uh, data handbook it is also you can calculate the effectiveness value theoretically as well as using the graphs but theoretically is more uh, uh, the relevant one because uh, the, uh, when you are going for the graph solutions we may end up with small errors uh, so, but uh, comfortably we can use with a small errors with that is uh, in most of our engineering applications uh, the error accept value is around 5% if the calculated value as well as the the value which is evaluated from the graph is less than 5% as yes, we can comfortably use that values now let us start with the the examples uh, uh, on uh, heat exchangers the first example uh, determine the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outer surface of a steel pipe having inner diameter 2.5 cm and outer diameter 3.34 cm uh, here uh, in the into bracket it is thermal conductivity is given as 54 watt per meter degree celsius bracket over for the flow and falling conditions he has given the the hi that is the inside heat transfer coefficient 1800 watt per meter square degree celsius h not 1250 watt per meter square degree celsius and uh, falling factors uh, falling factor fi that is the inside uh, falling factor and that is equal to f not outside falling factor it is 0.00018 meter square degree celsius per watt let me read the problem once again determine the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outer surface of a steel pipe having inner diameter 2.5 cm and outer diameter 3.34 cm into bracket k equal to 54 watt per meter uh, degree celsius for the flow and pulling conditions hi 1800 uh, watt per Meter square degree Celsius, H not 1250 watt per meter square degree Celsius, and F I equal to F not that is 0.00018 meter square degree Celsius per watt per watt. Now we know expression for the overall heat transfer coefficient is given by this based on the outside surface area. This equation is available in the data handbook. There are two equations available. One equation based on the outside surface area, another equation available based on the inside surface area. Same problem we can also calculate using that based on the inside surface area. We can have the uh, comparison later. It is given by this equation uh, that the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outside surface area u naught is equal to one by d naught by di into one over h i plus d naught by di f i 
plus d not by 2k ln d not by di plus f not plus 1 over h not now let us substitute all the values given in the problem uh, that is outer diameter inner diameter inside heat transfer coefficient the pooling factors inside and outside and the thermal conductivity of the that is the steel pipe which is given here we are taking the ratio d r not by d y so you uh, need not worry about the units any unit you can substitute it is ratio we are taking it is automatically eliminated 3.34 one over u not is equal to 1 by 3.34 by 2.5 into 1 divided by 1800 it is one over h i plus d not by d r not again 3.34 Divided by 2.5 into F I, it is 0.0018 plus D naught. Here we have to consider it to meters because the conductivity we are substituting in terms of watt per meter Kelvin. So this D naught has to be uh, converted to in terms of meters. 3.34 into 10 to the power minus 2 divided by 2 into K that is 54 lan. Again we are taking the ratio D naught by D I 3.34 by 2. For you, so it has to be substituted in the units plus F not again, zero point triple zero one net plus that outside heat transfer coefficient. It is one over twelve fifty one divided by one thousand two hundred and fifty. So, so this is the simplification. You uh, not uh, with this one over point seven four two plus zero point two four one plus zero point zero nine zero plus zero point one eight plus zero point eight zero into ten ten power minus three is a common factor. Hence. The overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outer surface area U naught is 487.1 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Meter square degree 487, 487.1 watt per meter square degree Celsius. This is how we have to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outer surface area. Same problem you can calculate. Uh, based on the inside surface area also the equation is available in your data and books later we can have the comparison the second problem this is uh, vtu july august 2000 taken from the vtu question paper july august 2005 let me read the problem find the length of the tube required for the following heat transfer conditions where the air is heated by exhaust gases Heat transfer is given 9,300 watts. Inside diameter of the tube 5 cm. Outside diameter of the tube 6 cm. Inside heat transfer coefficient 116 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Outside heat transfer coefficient 186 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Inlet hot gas temperature 400 degree Celsius. Exit hot gas temperature 150 degree Celsius. Inlet air temperature 50 degree Celsius. Exit air temperature 100 degree Celsius. Determine the percentage saving in the tube length. When the parallel flow arrangement is changed to counter flow, neglect the tube wall resistance. So we have to find out the percentage saving in the tube length when the parallel flow arrangement is changed to counter flow, neglecting the tube wall resistance. Let me read the problem once again. Find the length of the tube required for the following heat transfer conditions where the air is heated by exhaust gases. Heat transfer nine thousand three hundred watts. Inside diameter of the tube five centimeter. Outside diameter of the tube six centimeter. Inside Heat transfer coefficient 116 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Outside heat transfer coefficient 186 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Inlet hot gas temperature 400 degree Celsius. Exit hot gas temperature 150 degree Celsius. Inlet air temperature 50 degree Celsius. Exit air temperature 100 degree Celsius. Determine the percentage saving in the tube length when the parallel flow arrangement is changed to counter flow. Neglect the tube wall resistance. Now let us calculate the logarithmic mean temperature difference (LMTD) for a parallel flow arrangement. You know this equation: logarithmic mean temperature difference uh, uh, for parallel flow arrangement delta T2 minus delta T1 by ln delta T2 by T1. So it is uh, that is equal to Th0 minus Tc0 minus into bracket Thi minus Tci bracket over divided by ln Th0 minus Tc0 divided by Uh, thi minus tci if you substitute all the values here th0 is 150 tc0 is 100 degree celsius minus thi it is uh, inlet temperature of the hot gas is 400 degree celsius and exit temp uh, inlet temperature of uh, that uh, cold fluid is 50 degree celsius it is uh, land divided by land 150 minus 100 divided by 400 minus 50 so you will get uh, delta tm logarithmic like mean temperature difference after substituting all the temperature values is equal to 154 degree celsius
Now let us calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outside surface area. We know this uh, equation uh, uh, u naught is equal to one over d naught by di, one by h i plus d naught by di into f i plus d naught by two k ln d naught by di plus f naught plus one over h naught. See in the problem, in the uh, statement of the problem, volume factor is not given as well as the thermal conductivity. Now eliminating these terms in this equation, u naught equation, uh, this u naught is equal to one divided by d naught by di into one by h i. Plus one by h naught. Only eliminating all other terms, pulling factor as well as the uh, the thermal conductivity term. So this equation is also uh, this is available in our heat and mass transfer data handbook. Depending upon our requirement, we can eliminate the the terms. Substituting for all the d naught, di, this uh, inside and outer heat transfer coefficient, we get. Uh, the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outside surface area it is 63.6 watt per meter square degree celsius and you know the heat transfer rate q is equal to u as delta tm this equation we know so q is given it is 9300 watts uh, overall heat transfer coefficient we have calculated 63.6 surface area is pi d into l uh, here diameter of the, uh, the outer outer diameter is converted to meters then the delta tm for parallel flow it is 154 so we will get the length of the parallel flow heat exchanger is equal to 5.03 meters so now uh, when the flow is changed from parallel to counter flow arrangement let us calculate this uh, uh, lmtd logarithmic mean temperature difference for a counter flow heat exchanger the logarithmic mean temperature difference lmtd for a counter flow heat exchanger is given by this equation delta t2 minus delta t1 by ln delta t2 by delta t1 which is equal to into bracket th not minus tci bracket is over minus thi minus tc not divided by ln th not into bracket th not minus tci divided by thi minus tci substituting all the temperature values let us substitute the all the uh, uh, temperature values here here this is 150 minus 50 minus of bracket into bracket 400 minus 100 divided by ln 150 minus 50 divided by 400 minus 100 we will get this delta tm logarithmic mean temperature difference is 182 degree celsius now heat transfer rate you know in this equation q is equal to uas delta tm which is calculated for counter flow uh, arrangement so we will get the, this length of the counter flow heat exchanger is equal to 4.262 so percentage saving in length is it is 5.02 minus 4.262 divided by 5.02 which is 15.2 percentage now you can see the length required for a parallel flow heat exchanger is 5.02 meters whereas the for the same uh, conditions when the flow is changed from parallel to counter flow there is a reduction in the length this is because you have seen in the previous class that this counter flow heat exchanger is more effective than that of the parallel flow hence it, the length of the uh, this uh, counter flow heat exchanger is less than that of the parallel flow heat exchanger so we can save up to around 15% of savings in length by changing the flow from parallel to counter flow heat exchanger now let us uh, take the one more problem this is taken from uh, vitu question paper january 2008 question paper an oil cooler for a large diesel engine is to cool engine oil from 60 to 45 degrees celsius using sea water at an inlet temperature of 20 degrees celsius with a temperature rise of 15 degrees celsius the design heat load is 140 kilowatts and mean overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outside surface area of the tubes is 70 watt per meter square degree celsius calculate the heat transfer surface area for single pass parallel flow and counter flow arrangement i will read once again the problem an oil cooler for a large diesel engine is to cool engine oil from 60 to 45 degree celsius using sea water at an inlet temperature of 20 degree celsius with a temperature rise of 15 degree celsius the design heat load is 140 kilowatt and mean overall heat transfer coefficient based on the out outer surface area of the tubes is 70 watt per meter square degree celsius calculate the heat transfer surface area for a single pass parallel flow and counter flow arrangement this is the problem given 
now let us calculate the logarithmic mean temperature difference for parallel flow arrangement we have you have seen already this uh, equation in the previous two problems it is given by delta t2 minus delta t1 by land delta t2 by delta t1 so this is delta t2 is th not minus tc not delta t1 is thi minus tci divided by land th not minus tc not divided by thi minus tci substituting all the temperature terms it is 45 minus 35 minus into bracket 60 minus 20 divided by land 45 minus 35 divided by 60 minus 20 it is 21.64 degrees celsius now heat transfer rate we know it is q is equal to uas delta tm for parallel flow arrangement substituting all the values surface area of the parallel flow heat exchanger is is calculated to be 92.42 meter square now let us calculate let us change the flow from counter to sorry parallel to uh, counter flow then lmtd for counter flow heat exchanger it is given by this equation delta tm for counter flow heat exchanger it is delta t2 minus delta t1 divided by land delta t2 by delta t1 which is equal to th not minus tci minus thi minus tc not divided by land th not minus tci divided by thi minus tci substituting all the here in this case you see uh, this uh, delta t1 is equal to delta t2 okay in this case we have to go for arithmetic mean temperature difference that is amtd because uh, delta t1 is equal to delta t2 uh, for a, uh, if that is the case for a counter flow heat exchanger uh, when you come across this you have to go for the arithmetic Uh, mean temperature it is delta t1 plus delta t2 by 2 which is equal to 25 degrees celsius then in heat transfer rate is given by this equation q is equal to uas delta tm uh, for counter flow heat exchanger then uh, surface area of the heat counter flow heat exchanger uh, calculated to be around 80 meter square just you can look at here for a parallel flow it is 92.42 meter square whereas for a Uh, counter flow heat exchanger it is 80 meter square and you know again uh, we have learned uh, in the previous classes that the counter flow heat area heat exchanger is the more effective than that of the parallel flow heat exchanger once again it is with respect to area also it has been proved here now let us take uh, the one more problem one more problem uh, it is a cross flow heat exchanger in which both fluids are unmixed is used to heat water with engine oil water enters at 30 degrees celsius and leaves at 85 degrees celsius at a rate of 1.5 kg per second while the engine oil with cp equal to 2.3 kJ per kg kelvin enters at 120 degrees celsius with a mass flow rate of 3.5 kg per second the heat transfer surface area is 30 m square calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient using lmtd method i will read the problem once again fourth problem it is a cross flow heat exchanger in which both fluids are unmixed it is used to heat water with engine oil water enters at 30 degree celsius and leaves at 85 degree celsius at a rate of 1.5 kg per second while the engine oil with cp equal to 2.3 kJ per kg kelvin enters at 120 degree celsius with a mass flow rate of 3.5 kg per second the heat transfer surface area is 30 m square calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient using lmtd method this problem has appeared in video question paper june 2009 now let us write uh, to solve this problem write the energy balance between the hot and cold fluids it is the heat loss by the uh, hot fluid mh cph thi minus into bracket thi minus th not that is equal to mc cpc uh, mass flow rate and the cold uh, specific heat of cold fluids into bracket tc not minus tci and if after substituting all the temperature values here mass flow rate of the hot fluid is 3.5 cph is given 2.3 converted to joules multiplied by 1000 it is given thi 120 th is unknown uh, keep as it is that is equal to cold fluid flow rate 1.5 kg per second cpc 4.18 Uh, kilojoules per kg kelvin so for water it is uh, multiple converted to joules it is multiplied by 1000 so it is 85 minus 30 inlet uh, exit and inlet temperatures so the exit engine oil temperature it is uh, we get it is 77.16 degrees celsius we know uh, this lmtd for counter flow heat exchanger is given by this equation delta tm is equal to delta t2 minus delta t1 
divided by ln delta t2 divided by delta t1 that is equal to th0 minus tci minus thi minus tc0 divided by ln th0 minus tci divided by thi minus t substituting all the values that is th0 you have calculated 77.16 tci minus 30 minus up into bracket thi it is 120 minus tc0 it is 85 divided by ln the same value is 77.16 minus 30 divided by 120 minus 85 so we will get Delta TM for cross flow rate exchanger is 40.77 degree Celsius. Celsius. No, we need correction factor. It is a cross flow heat exchanger. You know, it is a, a correction factor based on the values of R and P. R is given by this equation T1 minus T2 divided by T2 minus T1. So it is THI minus TH0 divided by TC0 minus TCI. Substituting the values 120 minus 77.16 uh, divided by 85 minus 30 is equal to 0.78. Similarly, P value is T2 minus T1 divided by T1 minus small t1 it is tc0 minus tci divided by thi minus tci so 85 minus 30 divided by 120 minus 30 so we'll get 0.16 and based on the values of uh, this p and r the correction factor graph is available in the heat and mass transfer data and book and we have also discussed uh, uh, while discussing about the correction factor for cross flow heat exchanger the graph also available in these slides in the previous class slides so the correction factor is uh, it is found it is 0.9. Now heat transfer rate is given by this equation. Q is equal to MHCPH THI minus TH0 which is equal to 3.5 into 2.3 into 1000 divided by 120 minus 77.6. That is the heat loss equation by the hot fluid. So Q you will get around 345 kilowatts. And the heat transfer rate for cross fluid exchanger is given by this equation. Q is equal to UAF correction factor into delta TM. So we have calculated you know this is given 345 kilowatt converted to watts 345 into 1000 you we need to calculate area is given 30 meter square correction factor we have evaluated from the graph as 0 0.7 and delta tm we have calculated 40.77 so the overall after uh, calculation the overall heat transfer coefficient is uh, for this given situation is 313.41 watt per meter square degree celsius we get Now let us take another problem, another problem, fifth problem uh, on heat exchangers. This problem has appeared in the V2 examination uh, of June, July 2009. 8000 kg per hour of air at 105 degrees Celsius is cooled by passing through a counterflow heat exchanger. Find the exit temperature of air if water enters at 15 degrees Celsius and flows at a rate of 7500 kg per hour. The heat exchanger has a heat transfer area 20 meter square and overall heat transfer coefficient is 145 watt per meter square degree celsius take cp for air it is cpa it is given 1 kilojoules per kg kelvin and that of water cpw 4.18 kilojoules per kg kelvin i will read the problem once again uh, 8000 kg per hour of air at 105 degree celsius is cooled by passing through a counterflow heat exchanger Find the exit temperature of air if water enters at 15 degrees Celsius and flows at a rate of 7500 kg per hour. The heat exchanger has a heat transfer area of 20 meter square and overall heat transfer coefficient is 145 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Take Cp for air equal to 1 kilojoules per kg Kelvin and that of water Cp, CPW it is 4.18 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. This problem has appeared in the video examination of June July 2009 now since here only inlet conditions of both uh, uh, bases based on the statement of the problem the inlet conditions of hot and cold fluids are given now let us calculate the uh, heat capacity rate of hot fluid that is CH uh, capital CH is given by MH into CPH mass flow rate of hot fluid into specific heat of the hot flu fluid it is 8000 by converted to kg per hour to kg per second uh, it is given as 1 kilojoules per kg kelvin so which is equal to 2.22 then heat capacity rate of cold fluid it is cc equal to mc cpc it is 7500 divided by 3600 into 4.18 uh, 8.71 
among the heat capacity rates of both the fluids hot fluid is having minimum values hence it is c minimum 2.22 kilowatt per kelvin whereas the cold fluid is having the maximum heat capacity ratio so it is a c max so now heat capacity ratio capital c is equal to c minimum by c max it is uh, 2.22 by 8.71 which is equal to 0.26 now let us calculate the number of transfer units number of transfer units ntu you know it is given by the expression ntu it is given by the expression ntu uh, which is equal to uas by c minimum that is equal to 145 into area is given 20 divided by c minimum is 2.22 uh, so this uh, this is the conversion kilowatts it is there so convert it multiply it by 1000 so ntu you will get 1.306 number of transfer units now it is a given uh, the effectiveness value for the counter flow heat exchanger from chat that means for capital c equal to heat capacity is 0.26 and ntu equal to 1.36 for counter uh, flow heat exchanger chat we can directly evaluate the value of uh, the effectiveness value from the chat given in the heat and mass transfer data handbook or this graph is available in any of the heat transfer textbook uh, it is uh, 0.69 or it is also possible to calculate this uh, uh, effectiveness value uh, by the equation given in the heat and mass transfer data handbook for counter flow heat exchanger and you just cross check if the error is less than 5% then you can comfortably go for with the chat solution and we know that this uh, effectiveness uh, expression Uh, is given by this equation actual heat transfer to the maximum possible heat transfer actual heat transfer is ch into bracket thi minus th not uh, that is the uh, heat loss equation by the hot fluid divided by the maximum uh, heat transfer uh, maximum possible heat transfer within the heat exchanger is given by this equation c minimum into thi minus tci tci so substituting all the values substituting all the values effectiveness value you have evaluated from the graph as 0.69 it is thi you know it is 105 minus th not as it is and uh, uh, this is again 105 minus uh, 15 uh, thi minus tci in this case uh, here ch and c minimum they are same hence Uh, they are eliminated here so after calculation we will get exit temperature of hot fluid is equal to th not is equal to 42.9 degree celsius 42.9 degree celsius so now let us uh, take one more problem the sixth problem saturated steam at 140 degree celsius is condensing on the outer surface of a single pass heat exchanger the overall heat transfer coefficient is overall heat transfer coefficient is 1500 watt per meter square kelvin determine the surface area of the heat exchanger required to heat 2000 kg per hour of water from 20 degree celsius to 45 degree celsius also determine the rate of condensation of steam in kg per hour assume the latent of heat of steam to be 2145 kJ per kg this problem has taken from vtu examination question paper of january 2017 i will read the problem once again saturated steam at 140 degree celsius is condensing on the outer surface of a single pass heat exchanger the overall heat transfer coefficient is 1500 watt per meter square kelvin determine the surface area of the heat exchanger required to heat 2000 kg per hour of water from 20 degree celsius to 45 degree celsius also determine the rate of condensation of steam in kg per hour assume the latent heat of steam to be 2145 kJ per kg this problem has taken from vtu examination paper of january 2017 you know this is the temperature of a condensing steam remains constant that is thi equal to uh, th not if this is the case the lmtd equation either parallel flow or counter flow can be used if you use either parallel flow or counter flow and you know when one of the fluid is uh, uh, either condensing the correction factor is also not required now uh, the lmtd for counter flow heat exchanger is given by this equation this equation is available in heat and mass transfer data handbook delta tm for a counter flow heat exchanger is into bracket delta 2 minus delta t1 bracket over divided by ln 
into bracket delta T2 by delta T1 bracket over. That is equal to into bracket TH0 minus TCI minus bracket over minus into bracket THI minus TC0 bracket over divided by land TH0 minus TCI divided by THI minus TC0. Substituting all the temperature values, what you will get here? 140 minus 20 minus of into bracket 140 minus 45 divided by land of 140 minus 20 divided by 140 minus 40 we will get 107.01 degrees celsius and heat transfer rate you know this is given by mc cpc tc not minus tci the mc of is uh, cold fluid is 2000 kg per hour so converting it to kg per second divided by 3600 into 4.18 specific heat uh, exit temperature is 45 minus inlet temperature is 20 we will get 58.05 kilowatts and you know heat transfer rate is also given by this another equation q is equal to q uas delta tm so q is we have calculated 58.05 multiply by 1000 so converting it to watts u is given 1500 we need surface area keep as it is and delta tm we have calculated as 107.01 so after calculation surface area of the heat exchanger is, it is 0.362 meter square we will get now uh, rate of condensation of steam is given by this equation. It is uh, Q by HFG. Q by HFG. Q by HFG. Q by HFG. So Q is we have calculated. It is 58.05. And HFG is given in the problem. It is 22,145 kilojoules per kg. So that you will get it is 0 0.027 kg per second. So condensation of steam in kg per hour, it is given as just multiply it by 3600, we will get 97.2 kg per hour. Let me uh, uh, stop and we will continue in the next class.